Alright guys, it has been a little while since I've done a DC character history. Just gotta find the right time to do these because they do take a lot of work and a lot of research. But I am coming back today with a new one in a character, Black Mask. Now, if many of you don't know how this works, if you're new to my channel, basically what I do is I go to a random number generator, whatever number it gives me, I go to a page in my DC Encyclopedia book, and whatever character's there is who I talk about today. This is just a great opportunity to get some more knowledge on DC characters that people may not know about, instead of just talking about the typical Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and so on. So Black Mask is easily one of the best dressed longtime villains of Batman and Gotham City. Running a criminal empire in the heart of Gotham and not even trying to hide it is certainly one of his specialties. Of course, people who are deep into the DC world like I am will obviously know who this character is, but many of us will know him from the Ewan McGregor interpretation as Black Mask in the Harley Quinn film, and some will even remember the Black Mask idea identity used as the main villain of the Batman Arkham Origins game, which we actually just ended up finding out that it was Joker in disguise. Roman started off as a businessman who made terrible decisions to creating the identity of Black Mask and running a criminal organization. Here is a history to one of DC Comics' most notable crime lords. Now as it always works, just before we get into the history, let's look at some of his statistics. So his first debut is Batman Volume 1, Issue 386 from August 1985. His real name is Roman Sionis. His base of operations is Gotham City. His height is 6 foot 2 and weight is 205 pounds, although I believe the current current version of Black Mask is 6 foot 1 and 195 pounds, but really not that much of a difference. His eyes are brown and his hair is none, so he's bald. Or it just really doesn't matter because of the mask. His powers and abilities are criminal mastermind, skilled combatant and marksman, and a business slash mob tycoon. Although new renditions of him, apparently he has some mind control capabilities. His allies are of course the Gotham Mafia the False Face Society, and the Secret Society of Supervillains, and his enemies are Batman, Catwoman, and the Bat Family in general. Roman's Wealthy Upbringing in 1971, Roman Sionis was born to wealthy parents in Gotham City. However, when he was born, the doctor who birthed him accidentally dropped him on his head, possibly doing some kind of mental damage. Growing up, his parents cared more about their socialite appearance than they ever cared about the well-being of their son. As a boy, Roman even befriended Bruce Wayne, so that once again, his parents could keep up social appearances amongst the rich and famous, despite the fact that his parents hated the Waynes. Hating the hypocrisy and the quote-unquote masks that Roman's parents and their friends would wear to hide who they truly were, Roman's fascination of masks would then begin. Or perhaps there was some sort of mental and or confidence issue in the fact that he was dropped as a baby or maybe it was both things combined. After high school, Roman was given a top position in his father's company, Janus Cosmetics. This is where he met a young woman named Cersei on whom he planned on marrying. Although Roman's parents disapproved of this woman and he wanted him to break off the relationship. Absolutely furious and might I add overly ambitious on owning his family's company and fortune, Roman burns his parents' house to the ground, killing both his mother and father. As the CEO of Janus Cosmetics, Roman would run the company into the ground after making terrible business decisions. He created a line of face paint makeup that was rushed to market with no background testing. Hundreds of women used the product with the result being face disfigurement. After the failure and the impending contract, Controversy, Cersei ends her 
their engagement to Roman in front of his entire staff. At this point in time, Bruce Wayne was head of Wayne Enterprises, and this is where he offers to purchase Janus Cosmetics on the condition that he can appoint his own directors for the company. Roman accepted the bailout, but feeling humiliated in the process. Furious with his situation and how his life has panned out thus far, Roman goes to the cemetery where his parents were buried. As he enters the crypt, he destroys his father's ebony casket with stone and uses the chipped and shattered pieces to create his new identity, the Black Mask. Black Mask's Vendetta about a month later, Roman Sionis, as the Black Mask, has rounded up a small criminal grouping. All the men under his leadership were to wear specific masks that he felt best fit their personalities. The plan of Black Mask and the False Face Society of which he founded was to exact some sort of payback to Bruce Wayne. After killing three executives at Wayne Enterprises and hoped to draw out Bruce Wayne, Batman ended up deducing Black Mask's identity and learned the obvious truth on why Black Mask was hunting his alter ego. Bruce Wayne decides to hold a masquerade ball at Wayne Manor, where Black Mask tries to assassinate Bruce. The assassination attempt of course fails, and as Black Mask flees, Bruce has Jason Todd's Robin follow him back to his hideout, which is underneath the crypt of his family's grave. Through a false bottom in his father's coffin, Black Mask runs to his rebuilt family estate. Black Mask now begins to burn the house down in an attempt to distance himself not just from Batman and Robin, but from his torturous past. After Batman and Robin defeat his men, they enter his mansion, and before Black Mask could escape, Batman flings a roped batarang around his knees, dropping him face first into the fire. As Batman and Robin clear the flames from his face and body, the fire unfortunately burned the mask into Roman's face. For his crimes and his mental health, Black Mask is then sent to Arkham Asylum. False Face and True Face After Crisis on Infinite Earths and the modern age of comics begins, Black Mask's origin in history thus far has stayed intact. Thrown back into the underworld of Gotham's criminality, Black Mask proceeds with his vendetta against Bruce Wayne and continues to grow his False Face society. Black Mask has attempted to kill Bruce Wayne over the years and past popular storylines like Nightfall, Zero Hour, and No Man's Land. Although in No Man's Land, Black Mask's obsession with masks began to evolve in a horrific way. He became intrigued with pain and torture, thinking that his earlier fight with Batman, where his mask seared into his face from the house fire, was his own dominance over his personal torture. Black Mask would then become a cult leader where all false facers would have to become true facers by horribly disfiguring their own face and overcoming their own torture the way Roman did. Why anybody would ever join this, you must be just as damaged as he was. During the No Man's Land event, Black Mask and his cult focused on Gotham's clock tower, planning on making it their base of operations. At this time, Oracle was residing in the clock tower and was saved by the new Batgirl, Helena Bertinelli, before they could infiltrate the tower. Black Mask is once again defeated, but this time is sent to Blackgate Penitentiary. Black Mask vs. Catwoman And honestly, this might be a much bigger rivalry than Black Mask and Batman. After the No Man's Land event, Black Mask abandoned the True Facers and the False Facers and returned to the traditional mobster lifestyle. Black Mask would enter the drug trade, enlist help from corrupted police officers, and claim territory in Gotham's East End. This would lead to Black Mask having a face-off with the new protector of the East and Catwoman. If you want to know more about this story, I do believe I actually talked about it a lot 
in my Catwoman DC history. So if you want to check it out, the link is in the description below and I will tag it in this video. Two policemen under Black Mask's payroll ended up shooting Holly Robinson, who was Selena Kyle's sidekick. In response, Catwoman started attacking all of his organizations and businesses and even acted as a Robin Hood figure, stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. Black Mask would of course retaliate and his response was by finding everyone close to Catwoman and brutally and horrifically torturing them. Eventually, a furious Catwoman and an arrogant Black Mask would have a one-on-one -on -one showdown in his penthouse. Catwoman would dominate the fight and nearly beat Black Mask senseless for the horrible things he did to her family members and close friends. Black Mask would then be thrown off the edge of his balcony, hanging on for dear life with his one hand and begging to Catwoman for help. Catwoman obviously offered none, and Black Mask fell to his apparent death. Black Mask slash Orpheus. Whenever a character apparently dies, they are never dead. Black Mask is no exception. During War Games, which is a very good series, mind you, Black Mask returned to a Gotham that was tearing itself apart due to a war that, spoiler, accidentally started between all gang and criminal organizations. Black Mask was growing his army in private, so now was the perfect time to return. Removing and eradicating some Gotham gangs to strengthen his own, Black Mask went big and killed Orpheus, who was a Gotham crime fighter working for Batman. Black Mask assumed the identity of Orpheus and also captured Spoiler, torturing her for information and apparently killing her. We all know what that means, she's not dead. He learns the location of a Bat family base, the Gotham Clock Tower. Now, I know there's a similarity in No Man's Land, he was going to attack the Gotham Clock Tower, but he did not know that Oracle was in there, he was just going to use it as his own base, but this time around he learns that the clock tower is in fact a Bat family base. So using his army and his major influence, Black Mask bypassed Oracle's defenses and infiltrated the clock tower. Batman arrived to save Oracle and fight Black Mask, but in fear that there were too many men, Oracle initiates a self-destruct on the clock tower. Although Black Mask failed to kill Batman or a member of his family, his popularity in the criminal underworld only grew. Escaping the self-destruct sequence and going back into hiding, Black Mask was dubbed the Kingpin of Gotham and all other gangs united under him. Black Mask vs Catwoman Round 2 At this point, Black Mask has done a lot had a small crime war against the Joker, hired Mr. Freeze as an enforcer, acquired and was a frequent seller of kryptonite, used Mad Hatter's hat technology to brainwash and control Killer Croc, and dealt with Red Hood as he hounded Black Mask's businesses. Finally, all of this war, all of this crime, and all of his corruption has caught up to Black Mask. After Catwoman chases a bunch of villains out of the east end of Gotham, Black Mask finds interest in reigniting an old relationship with Catwoman by terrorizing her again. After torturing more people close to her, Catwoman became furious and was determined to end Black Mask once and for all. Catwoman cornered him in his penthouse and aimed a gun at his head. Not believing she'd pull the trigger, Black Mask taunted her and called himself her greatest arch nemesis, and that this wouldn't end until he killed everyone she loved. Black Mask was very wrong. Catwoman shot him in the head and effectively killed Roman Sionis. The GCPD investigated his death for a while, but never found any evidence to point towards Catwoman. Black Mask would return as a reanimated Black Lantern in the Blackest Night event, but Catwoman, Harley Quinn, and Poison Ivy would find a way to defeat him. And when Necron was defeated, Roman's corpse was returned to the grave. 
New 52. Now in the New 52, this is obviously where a lot of characters undergo a lot of origin changes. Black Mask is one of the few characters whose history isn't changed, or if it is changed, it's changed ever so slightly where the differences don't really matter. But what has majorly changed is instead of being dead like we last saw him in the pre-New 52, Black Mask survived his encounter with Catwoman and was being taken care of at Arkham Asylum. In Arkham, Roman was being taken care of by a doctor named Jeremiah Arkham, the great nephew to Amadeus Arkham. Jeremiah deduced that Roman had a split personality disorder, Roman and the Black Mask. Although a big difference of the Black Mask in the New 52, like I mentioned a little earlier, is that the mask itself had mind-controlling capabilities. The first time it's seen is when the Asylum is attacked by Talons from the Court of Owls, and Roman uses the mask to control the other inmates to attack the Talons. Black Mask eventually breaks out of Arkham, where he has a war against the Mad Hatter, since the Mad Hatter was feeling threatened by Black Mask's new telepathy pathic abilities. Batman of course steps in, defeats both of them, and returns them to Arkham Asylum. Back to his old ways. Of course, he is seen more in the New 52, just really not that prominently. So in the DC Rebirth continuity, Black Mask remains one of the biggest crime lords in the DC Universe. He is allied with Penguin as they run the underworld of Gotham, but in 2018's Teen Titans Rebirth, Damian Wayne had Black Mask locked up in a secret Teen Titans base in New York City next to Brother Blood, where they are actually subjected to cruel and inhumane conditions. So there is a history of Black Mask. There are of course other stories that revolve around this character, but I had to try and give you the meat, the main points of who and what he is all about. There are a couple things I skipped out on, like a couple of different fights, and like I've said, crime wars with other villains to secure dominance in Gotham, even to after he dies to Catwoman. That doctor I mentioned, Jeremiah Arkham, in pre-New 50, he actually takes over as Black Mask 2. I am not the biggest fan that Black Mask had telepathic abilities with his mask in New 52. The New 52 is where I actually stopped reading comic books, and I think it's because they just made some really odd, strange decisions with characters in that continuity. Overall, I like Black Mask. I'd like to see more done with him in live action action, movie, show, maybe even more video games somehow. Sometimes I am a sucker for just classical mobsters and Black Mask is one of those people, but he is brutal in every single way. He is by far one of the more R-rated villains that Batman and the Bat family have, so if there's any way to execute that, maybe in something like the Batman universe with Matt Reeves, I would be 100% down to see it. As per usual everyone, it is now your turn. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the Black Mask character. Let me know your favorite storyline with him, and if you didn't know anything about Black Mask in general, let me know what you think of him now. But that is it for this one, everyone. So until next time, I will talk to you all very soon.